Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor for markgaylor.com. Um, in this uh, movie tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a time-lapse movie uh, using Lightroom and Photoshop together. Okay, now what we have here is a sequence of 250 images captured with a five second interval. Now that would have taken me just over 20 minutes to record these. And I captured them through a hotel um, room looking out towards uh, Melbourne during dawn. Okay, now a um, couple of the camera settings I could run you through is apart from the five second interval using an intervalometer attached to the camera, I'm using aperture priority. Now the aperture is set at its maximum aperture F4. Uh, this uh, prevents uh, flicker in a time lapse movie and it also uh, does, it means that I don't actually have to remove any dust spots that might uh, be appearing on my sensor. Um, I'm using auto ISO and auto white balance so that it ramps the exposure and white balance over that 20 minute period uh, in camera. There is possible to do this using manual settings and using uh, doing post production editing, uh, but time lapse, uh, sorry, uh, Lightroom doesn't currently do this uh, post production ramping. Okay, so I'm uh, also using manual focus and I'm preventing any internal um, lights from appearing in that window uh, because uh, I am using a product called Lenskirt. You could just be working from a completely darkened room. Okay, so let's jump this into the develop module and you can see that I've been editing in um, all of those basic settings. Uh, if I just hit reset, you can see how far this image has actually come inside of Lightroom. And that is uh, the advantage of uh, using the raw file capture. You can see I've balanced those dark shadows with that very bright sky. Uh, some of the most important settings that are used to balance that is that graduated filters. And I actually got two in the sky and one in the foreground there. So let's just come out. Another a very important aspect to the editing is also to apply a 16-9 cross um, uh, aspect ratio on the crop. This uh, prepares uh, the, um, the stills for output to a screen. Okay, so let's come out of that crop. Once I've done all of that editing and I've got the images looking glorious, I'll make sure that, that those settings are appropriate um, for the very first frame and also the last frame. Let's just go into grid view. Now um, I'm, I'm going to synchronize these settings on this frame with all of the other frames. And we do that uh, just by simply hitting, um, first of all, we'll select all of the images. I'm, I'm going to use Command A on a Mac, Control A on a PC, so they're all selected. Then I'm going to come over and hit Sync Settings and check all and then synchronize. Now I've already synchronized that, otherwise that would take um, a couple of minutes for it to draw these previews. Uh, but that's uh, that process has been done. Okay, well, what we can do now is we can, um, let's just go um, actually put a star rating on the first, middle and last frames. So if I just come to attribute and hit uh, the two star, you can see the synchronization here. Let's go into eView. That's what I, that was the middle frame on the sequence prepared. And once it's uh, the, the, the settings have been synchronized and rolled out over that um, duration, you'll see that the last frame, the settings look appropriate to the last frame and they also look appropriate to that very dark beginning to dawn there. Okay, so once uh, that is done, Okay, we'll just go back into grid. I'll remove those star ratings. Let's make sure all of the frames are selected and then go to export. Now I'm going to put them into a subfolder called time lapse. I'm going to rename the files. The reason I'm going to rename the files is if you've got um, um, a uh, lots of numbers on that file already, the file number, the date, it is possible those numbers may confuse Photoshop. We really just want a one uh, number and that is it's uh, the sequence uh, from 001 to 250. Now if you've been using or capturing frames over 999 we need to move to a four digit sequence. I think I'll just show you how we can do that. We'll come over to the custom settings we'll come over to edit and we're going to choose custom name 
and sequence. If you haven't got a sequence here, let's just delete that. We're just going to click on sequence. Here I've got that four digit sequence there and I'll hit insert. OK, then we can save this as a preset so we don't have to do this every time when we're making time lapses. I'll just save current settings as default and I'll call that TL and I'll just put four zeros so I know it's a four digit sequence there and hit create and then I'll hit done. OK, so we've got that um, uh, custom text will read CBD with a four digit sequence. Now the size, you could choose your HD size, which is 1920 uh, by 1080. You could choose a 4K, uh, which would be 3840 uh, by 2160. I'm going for a resolution that sort of um, intersects those two HDs. This is a popular HD format for uploading to Vimeo and YouTube. It also um, allows me uh, to export a HD movie, a 1080 movie from Photoshop and do a little bit of post-production panning or zooming uh, so it doesn't look like the camera is working from a fixed position. I'm also going to hit the sharpen for screen because we're down sampling from very high resolution files and then we're going to come over and hit export. Now this would take um, uh, several minutes and so I've already been through this process and have a, a folder of exported files on my desktop. So I'll join you on my desktop uh, for the next step which is where we're using Photoshop to complete uh, this task. OK, you can see the time lapse folder of exported images from Lightroom on my desktop. And I've also got um, a royalty free piece of audio uh, that Kevin MacLeod um, written, has written. Uh, what I want is these two files really need to be in a project folder. OK, so I'm just going to create a new folder and I'll call it um, uh, Melbourne CBD and time lapse. OK, and this will be my master project folder that all of the resource files will live in. This is very important that we have this project folder because uh, if we create a, a master Photoshop document that will manage this um, a time lapse project, if it loses the audio clip or the stills, then we're going to be faced with missing links. OK, so this should keep everything um, uh, together and safe and Photoshop will have no problem finding its resources. OK, so we're going to come over to Photoshop. Um, I'm going to come up to the top bar and, call and uh, select File Open. I've had a little bit of a problem with this open one here, uh, not opening a sequence. So I'm going to come up to the top um, um, menu item, uh, File, Open. We're going to navigate to my desktop, the project folder and uh, the time lapse folder of images. Select the first image in the sequence. And then we need to find the option. Now this is a Mac and so I need to click on the options button. Uh, if you're working on a PC just see if you can locate this little checkbox called image sequence. Once we've done that we can now select open. Do not attempt to open all images into Photoshop at the same time. Photoshop is just referencing these JPEGs. We now choose a frame rate. Now your choice of frame rate, we have some presets here. So you might, uh, if you're shooting other movie clips at one of these frame rates, this would be a good time to make that decision. I'm creating um, um, many clips that I'm going to piece together and I'm going to be using 25 frames per second. And so I'll select OK. OK, now what has happened is um, uh, time lapse, uh, sorry, Photoshop has created a time lapse already. It's basically sequenced all of those images in numerical order. If you take a look at the layers panel here, you'll see we have a little movie icon. Now remember the uh, images aren't embedded into this layer. It's referencing the, the, the uh, still images in that folder. So one of the ways to make sure that we don't get any uh, nasty exclamation marks or question marks here is simply just to come over to File, Save As and save our working project 
into our project folder and I'll call this um, um, CBD and time lapse. Okay, and that will be my file. Okay, so I'm keeping all of the resources inside of that project folder. If I click on the play button now, um, Photoshop will play through those clips. Okay, now it's not playing in real time because it's caching each and every one of those frames, which is quite hard work for Photoshop. So it's playing it back at roughly half speed on my computer. Once it's cached them, however, the next time I play them back, it'll play back in real time, now at the 25 frames per second. So we can quite quickly see how that is working. Okay, so that is great. Okay, so all we need to do now is add an audio track. So I'm just going to click on the little plus icon. Uh, I've got my audio track in the project folder. So I'll just select that, select open. Okay, now the movie, uh, sort of the music starts off quite slowly. So I'm just going to um, uh, hide the first seven or eight seconds of that audio. You'll see it snaps back to the start point. Uh, the audio file is also very long. So I'm just going to trim that down to the duration of my time lapse clip. Okay, so let's just uh, expand that out. I'll click on those little mountain icons several times. Um, so we can see all of that clip. Now if I play back, it's going to play back with the music. So I'll just hit that playback once more. And you can hear that music nicely over the top of the clip. Now what will happen when it hits the end, the music, the music is going to stop abruptly. So I'm just going to fade that music out uh, by clicking on the little arrow on the right side of the audio clip and choose a one second fade or thereabouts on the audio. So it'll just uh, um, uh, lower its volume slowly over that last second rather than stop abruptly. Okay, so we are ready to export. And now we could export this as that 2506 uh, HD, or we can do a little bit of panning and zooming. And the way we do that is we first right click on the layer and choose convert to smart object. Okay, the timeline goes purple here. We now click on the little uh, arrow on the right side of this timeline and we can switch from no motion to pan and zoom, pan or zoom. Okay, so which one should we choose? If we choose pan, it's basically going to show which direction we pan in. I think what I'll do is I'll zoom and I'll choose to zoom in. Okay, and this has basically been set now. Okay, now we lose the cached files now. So if we did hit the play button one more time, again, it would play uh, quite slowly, especially if the audio is enabled as well. It's going to try skipping frames to uh, keep up with the audio so it won't cache all of the frames. If I did want to cache all of the frames so it play back smoothly, I would have to mute the audio on the first time I play through. Okay, so we're pretty much ready to go now. Uh, I'm going to export. I'm going to hit the little icon called render video here. Uh, I've got the opportunity to name the video if CPD isn't what I want to appear. Okay, so I've got the name now and uh, I will now come over to preset and choose my um, size or resolution of movie and frame rate from these presets. And I'm choosing HD 1080 at 25 frames per second. You can see this will downscale the 920 to 1080. Um, this, um, because we're working with a higher resolution uh, resource files, as we zoom in, I'm not going to lose quality. Okay, so now all we need to do is hit that render video. This will typically take only a minute or two if your time lapse is short. Okay, so I'll hit the render video and that will process. Okay, so um, uh, once that is done, uh, I'm going to show you and play back uh, the rendered movie at the end of this process. Okay, and that basically completes the workflow from beginning to end.